Well, this thing, this puller has been on here for a week and ain't budged. I put some heat on it the other day, kind of tapped around on it with a hammer and still hadn't popped. So I don't know, we're gonna leave it on there. Hopefully eventually it'll pop. Uh, put it in the microwave. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Yeah, put it in the microwave, then it'll pop. Oh, it'll definitely <laughs> pop. Yeah, right. eventually, yeah. It'll catch on fur. <laughs> fur. I don't know, man. What do you think if I, I take like these and move it down to here? They could have more pulling power? Or would it be too narrow? I think it would be too narrow. I don't know. I think it would bind the puller up too much, don't you think? I don't know. I really don't. Yeah, I mean, you could try it. I guess I, we could try it. It's taking all those bolts apart. and Anyway. Ain't that obviously ain't working. Yeah, that ain't working. <laughs> it ain't working. I don't have a bigger so, puller than that. That's kind of what I got. I mean, how many days, you say? Maybe a week. Wow. Yeah, that ain't worked. I mean, it's at least four or five days it's been like that. But then I've had them, like, do that before where, I mean, not a Chrysler, but like a Johnson Evinrude, where it just wouldn't come off. It was a small engine, kind of like this one is. It was a small engine, and, mm. and uh, I just left it sit there, and I was working in the garage, and all of a sudden, pop! I was like, what was that? You know, because I'd forgotten about it. And then uh, I was like, oh, that was that flywheel. Finally. You know, it, mm -hmm. but it just sit there for a long time. I don't know. Did you lubricate it anyway? Or? Yeah, I mean, but see that, P, I put some PB blaster on it. But the, the way those are made, I don't know. I don't know, man. If it's even if it's even making its way to where the chemical bond is. Right. Yeah, you know, that's what it is, like a chemical bond. I don't know it's if a I'm chemical gonna... James Bond. It's a yeah. <laughs> it's more like a Blues Brothers and we're on a mission from God. Oh man. and if you haven't subscribed it's free so hit that subscribe button and uh, hey check out hawkeyemarine.net for parts and stuff you know how like after you've been on YouTube for a while yeah and you gotta do the spiel you know like, oh yeah like subscribe and all that yeah when you get to the point where it's like you can't even say it because you want to just get, get, it all, it over get it all over with, you know? Right. So you're like, subscribe. You know, you just kind of, you just kind of, you know, you know what I'm saying. You just foul it up. Oh, yeah. You know, because you want to get it over with. You're right. Like, so tired of saying it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so what's know. going on with your deal? Oh, uh, well, the gentleman that towed Jeff I don't I don't recall who it was who it was but they suggested that that I had a bad coil on my on my uh, 225 Merck Terry Bird Kloster okay he suggested he said that from he what I from what I recall he said that it sounded like the motor was had a coil down on it which would explain why I was low on horsepower you know, I felt like I was anyway. Right. Come to find out, I tested all the coils today. I was running on four cylinders, guys. I had two bad coils. So and, they, But the good news is, with two bad coils, I still ran 56 mile an hour with a bad lower unit. Yeah. Well, so. you know, the thing you too, well, I, I, who knows? Maybe that happened afterwards. But, uh, you know, luckily it was like one in six. Because if it would have been like one in three, it wouldn't even rain. It would have disrupted the firing order. It would have been so rough, yeah, it would have yeah. just 
but because it's one and six, it still could run. Right. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. And uh, I don't know. We so just... as you can see, guys, there's these are the coils right here. You can see I got an empty slot here and here. Those are the two that were bad. And that yeah, was on. Yeah, remember you got one, three, five, two, four, six. It was on uh, cylinder one and cylinder six. Yeah. So, but I tested all these. Test fine. Now I wrote. They had how many mega? Uh, they had. Yeah, it's mega ohms, right? Yeah, I can show them this. So, cylinder one had zero resistance, zero ohms resistance. Cylinder 2 had 14.57, 14.34, 13 13.02, and the weak one was 12.42 on cylinder 5. And then cylinder 6 was 0, 02. So we had 1 and 6 not firing, and then cylinder 5 is weak, in my opinion. And, and what are the, what is the spec from... I don't what, know. What, an 8500 to... That would be maybe twenty nine. Comment or anybody, any of you uh, marine mechanics that may know what those the the ohm resistance should read on those uh, coils. Uh, because these two look low to me. Yeah, I kind of, but I don't know. I uh, just leave a comment down below and let us know, and uh, we'll also get to research and look. Yeah, but he proved it to me. He showed me with, you know, we ohmed it out. The other thing you want to check is your wires. Now your wire is like it has a, it's like it has a diode in it. So you're gonna to have to read it because it's gonna have resistance, just like a diode will have resistance. So you know it might be something like 0.77 whatever or a diode test of point three three six yeah but you have to have that if you put it if you put it on continuity you're not going to get continuity because because it, it's a diode so i'm just going to which is like why have to cover this up put the cali back on and i'm going to have to order a couple new coils uh then pop the new ones in and pop, I'm going to go ahead and change the plugs too because the plugs look really bad. Yeah, if there's a low, you might you may need more than one coil. Yeah, it makes me want to check by now. I would. I you would know? go through each one of them and, and ohm test them. See, the thing about these Optimaxes without a computer is really difficult to diagnose something. Right. You really almost need to hook up to a computer. But you need a good diagnostic computer. Like, they gave us a diagnostic when you bought this. But remember, like, we don't know what they were using. Right. Were they using a CDI or some off-name brand? They just, I don't know what they were using, uh, to be honest with you. So, you know, anyway. And one thing I'll mention, this is one key indicator on these. Uh, man, I wish I had one out here. They're in the house. But... One in, in, clear indication I found of a bad coil is where the spark plug wire connects to the coil, it'll be corroded. Both yeah. both of them that weren't fired were and completely that, the corroded. The corrosion may have, have uh, you know, done damage to the coil too. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why, like on these, I don't care if you're near salt water or not, some dielectric grease is what you want you to use to, yeah. because it, they're going to build up condensation in there just from the nat natural atmosphere and then you know you 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 got a little bit of corro corrosion inside of them and then they start like especially you let it sit for a while these things like to be ran and if you have an air if you've got one of these on here you need to rarely change this air filter because this is your air canister. So you, you also wanna, it's a NJ NGK plug that they're using, Jeff. Yeah. And that is on a tag, usually on your over by your emission somewhere. It's gonna tell you what it is. I don't know where yours is. Or you can look it up. 
yeah here's an emission tag on the front see spark plug I don't know if you guys can see it but it's NGK IZFR5G there you go guys and there's the serial it gives you the whole shebang you know, and this tank still looks like it's low to oh, me. Yeah, there's the spark plug gap right there. Yeah. 0.8 mm. You just got to be real careful with gapping those because it's an iridium plug. You know, just got to be, try to be safe with them. Anyway, yeah, that's what's going on here. So one of the things that I want to get is I want to get a... Uh, yeah, you know, I want to get a diagnostic software. Yeah, I'd be I, nice. It's the next thing I'm probably going to get. It's going to cost me some money, but, you know, hey. Then I can do diagnostics. We'll see you later. Okay, I was going to show you guys, uh, you know, checking these kind of spark plug wires. Uh, you're going to put it on the... Uh, over here on that diode test and then you take your spark plug wire and put our lead say like positive on this purple one which is spark plug in uh, 0.468 and that is right and then if we do it the other way it won't matter It's going to be 0 0.462. That's about right. If we put it on our own reading, put it over here on this 2K scale, and it's going to show somewhere around, yeah, 0 0.722. So that's how you know there's a diode involved because it's 0.72. You could, if you measure the voltage drop, I think that's what it is anyway. Same thing this way. Yeah, 0.722. And um, of course, he labeled these as bad. But your, these are a five pin. So on the middle pin, is going to be ground. If you check that, like you put your lead on here. And then you put your other lead, like on here. You know, it's not going to show anything. And the other thing, or it will show something. It'll show like, like we think it's like 14 meg. And then uh, I was looking at a CDI unit, a CDI troubleshooting guide. And I think what it was telling me is also you need to check from pin to pin on these like all of them will be like a diode so I can't do it this way but there's a you're gonna go pin to pin and it should show like a diode on all of them except for that pin from here to the output of the cool and then that's gonna show you uh, you know we haven't determined what the actual range is yet but We'll figure that out. Um, these coils are, let me see, the revision A. You know, there, there are quite a few revisions now. Uh, what he should have is that 77473, I think, coil, and then like a 250 Pro XS will have the 77471, I believe it is. At least that's a number one what where we're at right now so anyway just thought I'd share that with you hang on all right so you can see I moved these down a hole yeah it takes a minute to do it but I've got it like really some pressure on there didn't want to come off so I heated it up squirted some PV blaster in there doesn't do anything. 
I guess I'm gonna let it sit there and maybe it'll pop. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Does anybody know, Chuck? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, he, yeah, anyway. Well, I don't know what I'm doing, man. I'm ready for it to warm up and we're just started, man. We're in the fall. Uh, went down to, had to drop off my dad's old truck this morning because the neighbor backed into the door. I never park it over there. And then I just happened to park it there. And so the driver's side passenger door, she backed into it. Cause she's not used to that truck being parked over there. I meant to move it because, you know, need to get it out of the way. I like to park it over here. Anyway, dropped it off this morning. She didn't do much damage, but they got to paint it, do whatever they got to do. And uh, anyway, they gave me this rental. So. Yeah, man. Might as well use it, I guess. So, I don't, I kind of have to read this thing. How many miles they get. You know, she's trying to sell me some gas this morning, Chucky. She's like, oh, it's got a quarter tank. You know? And I'm like, okay. And then she's like, you know, you can bring, you can just bring it back empty you know, you want to prepay the gas? And I'm like, no, I don't want to prepay the gas. And then she's like, well, we're 285 a gallon, which it's better than it has been. <laughs> yeah. But it's still like, now it's like 279. Anyway, I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And then she goes, well, or you can bring it back, you know, a core of a tank. Well, yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, that's what I'm going to do, you know. Exactly. So they didn't give me a tank full of gas. Like, that was weird, too, because it, it well, used to be they'd I fill up the you. gas tank, and you had to bring it back full. But see, what's happened is they got to go by the gauge, and full may not be totally full, it's and you can really overfill it. them to only put a quarter tank in those exactly and then they're trying to get you on the gas so they gotta charge for gas i don't understand it anyway well, the other insurance company's in paying for it in this inflationary economy a lot of businesses have to they have cut, to cut cost somewhere everywhere and, they can you know you can understand why they don't want to fill up that tank right you know it's expensive it is expensive anyway so I'm driving this around for a week, I guess. It's a 22, a 2022 Dodge Ram. It's got a 5.7 Hemi in it. I mean, it seemed pretty peppy. Drives nice. It's kind of big. I don't know. It's, it's different. So we got that going on. Chucky's checking all his coils. And, uh, and there's so much stuff to do. But I gotta get this disassembled because I gotta get the parts ordered for it. So I'm just get that done and then I mean in between I'm gonna jump around I guess. I'm gonna play that song, jump, jump, jump around. But anyway, that's done for now. Anyway, hey, uh Just let her go, let her rip, tear chip. What do you think, Chuck? Let her rip. Ain't no sense of binding yourself up. I guess. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah. Well, hey, you always told me that it cures cancer. Yeah. Which, you know, that's debatable, but, you know. Yeah. He's talking about farting, if you don't know. And I'd, I'd, I'd always fart, and then I'd say, yeah. See there? It cures cancer. And